Hey Gunfingers, I'm here tonight at Warriors and Bites Dog Valley with none other than Batman himself. Hi. Hi, how are you feeling? Ill, but I'm here. Are you excited? Very excited, yeah. There was no way I was going to miss it. Right. So let's rewind the time at your young age. What did you study and what was your dream job? Um, I studied mechanics really but my dream job has always been music production or it wasn't i didn't say i don't think it was a dream job but it was always my passion so it, it became my job so i guess i didn't ever think i'd make a job out of it but the fact that i did is amazing i guess what got you into dubstep um it's quite a long story to be honest i've been making music since i was about 15 and i didn't know what dubstep was at that point but i was making grime and drum and bass and so I was making music at the 140 tempo, which is what dubstep is. But I was making grime with drum and bass bass lines. I used to call it heavy grime before I knew what dubstep was. And then, yeah, I've made heavy grime for years. And then when I discovered dubstep, like Joker, Casper, Rusko, them kind of people, I realized there was already a, a genre that existed that I was making already. I didn't even realize. So kind of naturally fell into it, I guess. Being from the UK, you're probably very familiar with other electronic music jars such as drum and bass. What inspired you to specifically pursue as a main draw with dubstep? Um, kind of going back to the previous question, I was making I was making drum and bass yeah. and grime and a mixture of the two. And I kind of always liked the the tempo of dubstep or grime, 140. I just kind of liked the the half time mm -hmm tempo so it, i just kind of naturally yeah. yeah fell into the dubstep world but yeah drum and bass i was making before dubstep and grime and yeah you remember your first gig as a raver yeah oh as a raver yeah. funny story actually i didn't go to any shows as a raver before i had any gigs my first my first rave was a rave that i played at okay, <laughs> okay. Because I live in a I live in a very small city, not many people, it's like a hundred thousand people. We don't have any kind of dubstep scene or not even really a music nightlife scene. So from where I'm from, I didn't really go out. Uh, we're gonna talk about his career and his projects. Your career began in 2010. What is the story behind the name Bad Claps? Um, it's just a play on Jamaican slang. So words like bumper clap, rass clap. And like back in the day, it made a lot more sense because when dubstep was more dub influenced, like reggae influenced, we used to use a lot of samples of that kind of nature, bumba clark, ras clark. So it kind of, back then it made a lot more sense to, but it's just stuck. And uh, I found a unique way of spelling it. And now if you type that into anywhere, it's the only thing that comes up. So yeah, just it started off as a play on Jamaican slang. Your first two tracks that came out were Bullet Face, and Wallace and Bumman. Oh, uh, what made you choose those two for your first release? Um, I didn't choose them. It was the label that I submitted some stuff to that chose those two records. But um, yeah, I'd prefer not to talk about those. I don't like them. Really? They're, Why? They're just very old. Very, very old. And yeah, that, that's it. Just very old. And just don't sound... I'm almost ashamed to listen no, to it. Don't <laughs> um, you signed into Never Say Die Records in 2015 and you released Bad Like This EP uh, on Black Label, followed by Bad Fire, which had a huge success. Could you tell us a bit more about that period? Um, yeah, that, I mean, for me, that's probably the favorite part of my career, that, that kind of 2015 era when I, I kind of came from the, the underground deeper kind of stuff and then started to play with the more heavier stuff and uh, I made Head Crush which is the song that got Never Say Die to sign me or they released that song for us. Yeah, what about that period? Was there anything special you would like to tell us? Um, no, other than the fact that it was just like where I feel like things really started to take off yeah. like really um so that'll always be a fond memory. 2017, you remixed one of Excision's very successful track as well, called Z-Shit. Yeah. 
Could you tell us your encounter with Excision and how the remix came to life? It's a bit of a boring story, really. I didn't... <laughs> it was just, I think Excision needed... Uh, Excision was doing a remix album, so he must have asked my manager who would be available when my manager asked me. Um, they gave me a list of songs to choose from and I heard G-Shit, the original, and immediately knew like, yeah, that one. So I took that one. Uh, I already had a drop idea on my mind. So I just took the vocal, made the drop idea. But I didn't think it would be anywhere near as successful as it is. Yeah, no, no I really didn't. <laughs> I really didn't think it would be. Okay. It's probably my most, I think it's my most played song. Yeah, it's one of them. Yeah. Did it feel like you reached a milestone in your career after that remix? Did it feel like what, sorry? That you reached a milestone in your career after that remix? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Having having a song with more than, or, or like plays in the millions yeah. and kind of the whole scene, every video of a set I saw, that song was in there. So yeah, I feel like it was a big milestone. Yeah. Talking a bit about drum and bass, uh, you released a drum and bass track called Wild in 2021. <laughs> One, how did it feel to release drum bass since I think last time was 2016? Yeah. Then it was since why is there such a like gap in between? I mean, the truth is I didn't make drum and bass for a while. Yeah. But uh, the wild thing is weird because that song was an accident. Like, I I didn't mean to send that to Never Say oh. Die. Okay. It, it was in a it was in a folder of songs, and I think I just left it in there, and I didn't think that they would pay any attention to it. But TJ, the, the A&R for Never Say Die, loved it so much. He messaged me like, this is fucking amazing. And I was like, shit, I didn't even mean to leave that in there, so. Who are some of your biggest musical influences, both within and outside of dubstep? Outside of dubstep, uh, The Prodigy, for sure. Uh, Pendulum. noisier inside of dubstep company as well is an influence i mean space laces for sure um there's too many to name on the spot honestly there's so many are there any artists you'd love to collaborate with in the future? A lot, yeah. Uh, Space Laces is one. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that, Space Laces. We are going to talk a bit about his production. Uh, what's your creative process? How do you create any unique sounds and bass lines that are characteristic of your style? Um, just by sitting on my computer and playing around and waiting for something cool to happen. So honestly, all of my good stuff is just an accident. It's just, okay. <laughs> that's it, yeah. It's, like boring. it's just an accident, yeah. <laughs> Which one of your tracks or project are you the most proud of? The G-Shit remix, just for the sheer amount of plays it has. Um, but in terms of songs I've made, Wild actually probably is one of the ones I really, every time I listen to it, it makes me happy. And, I'm probably, yeah, I'm really proud of Wild, actually, yeah. yeah. What are some of the biggest chances you've faced as a dubstep producer in the music industry? Challenges. Um, getting the US visa mm -hmm. is probably the biggest challenge. And then I got the visa and then had the visa taken off me because of cannabis. And uh, so that, I would say the US visa. I don't really think there's been many other like major challenges. The US visa is, is the challenge that I'm still yet to overcome. <laughs> How do you perceive the evolution of dubstep over the years and where do you see it, the jar heading in the future? Um, I think the evolution is really cool. So as I mentioned at the start, when I when I picked my name, Bad Clark, dub, dubstep was just dub and it was just reggae influence. But the longer time has gone on, the more, uh, the more influence other genres have had on the, on the scene. So now we have like, all different types of sub-genres of dubstep, like rhythm and, and the, the heavy, uh, what do you call it, like a, like a tear-out kind of stuff. Um, so the evolution is really cool, and I love how the longer the time goes on, the more diverse the sound gets, but still manages to keep that 
raw head banging <laughs> half time kind of uh, flow. And what was the last bit of the question? Sorry. Uh, how do you see it um, heading oh, in the uh, future? I think the same way it's been going. Like, there's going to be a lot more influences, and I feel like as well the the barrier to entry is a lot lower now too. So the, the there's a lot of a lot of the people that are coming out now are younger than we were back in the day when we started to make it. So we've got like 16 year olds now making the most fire stuff. So yeah, the evolution is. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm excited to find out actually. What advice would you give to young producers looking to break into the dubstep scene? Um, uh, advice, I mean, there's so much, basically, probably, you probably would have heard this elsewhere, but don't watch what other people are doing, do your own thing and really just stick to it. And, and, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, sorry, my, I'm ill. So my brain is just not working, but <laughs> do your own thing, stick to it and really, uh, build it up like pay attention to it and uh just try not to copy other people I'm, i've been guilty of it myself and it doesn't get you anywhere okay. to be fair i regret the times that i've taken too much influence from other people i look back on it like i shouldn't have done that so yeah find and and you won't find a sound you won't know what your sound is going to be until you find it and and you will find it by accident so just spend as much time as you can messing around don't watch youtube tutorials uh, really? yeah yeah Is that? yeah oh, okay most of the kids on there don't know what they're on about oh, okay i would say that yeah uh, yeah <laughs> they have all the gear but no idea <laughs> uh we're gonna talk a bit about the jar so what's the difference between the dubstep in america and the dubstep in europe the dubstep in europe is definitely more open to the more minimal side of things i think mm -hmm. more open to the slow like more 140 stuff with more of a groove i feel like the american dubstep tends to be more 150 and just straight heavy tear out i'm not saying they don't like the deeper stuff there but it definitely doesn't do as well as over here in europe so that's probably the main difference for me aside from that there isn't a difference why do you think that more and more dubstep artists are starting to produce drum bass tracks um I don't know why as a whole, but I would imagine it's just because drum and bass is a very hard genre to get right. So I feel like once you get good at making dubstep, you kind of naturally want to see if you can make drum and bass because it's very technically uh, difficult to make. So I think it's that and the fact that right now uh, drum and bass is having its like blow up in America. So I think that too is gaining a lot of popularity and uh, yeah, I think it's just a challenge as well. It's very hard to make, and when you do it right, it's very rewarding. The public seems to appreciate it more than a few years ago. Yeah, like Americans were very stubborn about oh, only dubstep, and then now they're really actually enjoying dubstep. Like yeah, I love men had a exactly. had a drum and bass stage. Yeah, and people were loving it. Yeah, so it's really nice to see it evolve there. Yeah. How does a British dubstep artist maintain a working flow in a working flow? Yeah, a dominated. Uh, engine by drum bass. I don't know if it is. I don't know if I feel like it's dominated by drum and bass. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, oh, you mean in the UK? Yeah, yeah. Well, the UK. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> the UK is non-existent for me. Oh, I don't. Okay. I don't even count the UK as. Okay. <laughs> as like, I played a show there recently, but it's the first one in years. The UK. I feel like they stopped liking dubstep years ago, and it's hard to win them back now. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's very hard in the UK to to survive as a dubstep act yeah. with drum and bass and house being the most popular things. It's, yeah, it's impossible. Okay, <laughs> uh, we gotta talk about a bit of DJ life. Do you have any worst show experience? And if you do have one, what was it? What worst, happened? Worst? Yeah, the worst. Oh, well, I have so many. <laughs> uh, I have so many all the way from. Uh, having a green room that was a toilet, like the, the, the bathroom area was the green room for an event I played once. So we were all in there with a table with the urinals around us and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, promoters not, promoters not picking you up from the airport. Oh. Uh, but one that happened to me recently was a show I played in London last month. 
and two of my tracks for no reason just started just turned into white noise so halfway through the song it just started going Psh! and we, no one could figure out why and we still don't know why it happened oh, you, oh, okay <laughs> wow what are your best memories around the world as a DJ? best memories around the world oh again there are too many to really narrow down but i would say as a whole this is going to sound cheesy as shit, but just playing my music to other people around the world even in places like china and the philippines it's just that that is probably the yeah. the best thing ever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys need to talk about his last releases so your previous ep sorry is a vip release of two tracks rumpus dumpa and campers what made you choose to rework those specific tracks what what made me choose to release them yeah why these two out of all the ones you could have done a vip from um because i've been playing them in my sets for so long i just felt that like they needed a little kind of new spin on them i didn't really want to remix them or i just wanted to like kind of change the intro a bit have like a fake out build so i, I when i made them i didn't plan on releasing them it was just more for my sets but i think they did really well People kept asking me to release them, so I eventually did. Let's talk about your latest release EP, Boombox, which came out today. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. This EP has one room based track called Obsidian. So what made you release another drum based track this year? Um, well, I always like to keep my EPs a bit kind of varied. I don't want to just release four dubstep tracks or five or however many. So we went with the three dubstep tracks and then I've got a bunch of drum and bass that I've made. I've still got some to come out as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I like to mix the EPs up a little bit and have something on there that might, somebody might like that they didn't realize, like I might introduce somebody to drum and bass or to that style of drum and bass that they didn't realize they ever liked it. Yeah, so it's kind of like, yeah. And I just really like the song as well, Obsidian. Yeah. 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 Do you have anything, other projects, maybe collaborations in the work? Me and people just started a collab. Oh, no. Nice. Um, about two weeks ago. So I'm not sure what will happen with that yet. It's very early, but it'd be really good if that came out at some point. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked about that. Uh, I've got two remixes I'm working on that I can't say who for, unfortunately. But yeah, no, I'm very busy. There's a lot, there's a lot to come. There's a lot to come. <laughs>